the first group of drugs we are going to discuss they are called as alkylating agents alkylating agents now suppose this is a double standard dna this is a double standard dna this is another double standard dna now we know that the dnas do not talk to each other in a normal cell normal human cell we have 46 chromosomes 23 pair of chromosomes and every chromosome has plenty of dna but they do not talk to each other they keep on doing their own work now when we give an alkylating agent what it does is it will attach the alkyl group to dna the name says it will attach the alkyl group so it attaches the alkyl group to dna at this place it attaches the alkyl group to DNA of this cell, uh, DNA also. Now these two alkyl groups join. So similarly, alkyl group attached here, alkyl group attached here, these join. Alkyl group attached here, alkyl group attached here, they join. So what happens when we give alkylating agents, two DNAs unite with each other. So that result in formation of dimers. Normally, dimers do not exist in the cell. So, whenever dimers are produced, the enzymes present in the cell think that some defective DNA has come. So, when the defective DNA comes, how the cell enzyme responds? They will break down that DNA. So, dimerization result in activation of enzymes in the cell and they will destroy DNA. So when the whole of DNA is in the dimerized form, so whole DNA will be destroyed and the cell will be killed. Okay? So simple mechanism, they bind to DNA, result in formation of dimers. Dimers normally do not exist. So that will lead to destruction of DNA due to activation of enzymes. Okay? Now important question which is asked is, where they attach the alkyl group? What is the most common site of alkylation at which place they attach the alkyl group. So you need to remember it is N7 of guanine. Remember we have four nitrogen bases in DNA, adenine, guanine, cytosine, So guanine, on the chemical structure of guanine, seventh place the nitrogen which is present, that is the site of alkylation, most common site of alkylation. Okay, so N7 of guanine. Now, like all the anti-cancer drugs, they have four side effects. Bone marrow suppression, alopecia, diarrhea, hyperuricemia, apart from vomiting. So, these four side effects are there. Now, alkylating agents as a group have two more side effects. What are those side effects? Number five is, these can cause secondary leukemia. And number six is, they can cause sterility or permanent infertility. They can cause permanent infertility. So, secondary leukemia and infertility basically they affect the gonads. So, sometimes the question is asked which of the following drug is gonadotoxic? So, they are basically wanting to ask which cause infertility or sterility. The answer will be alkylating agents. So, alkylating agents have six side effects. Four common to every drug, bone marrow suppression, alopecia, diarrhea, hyperuricemia and two of this group, secondary leukemia and infertility. Okay. Now, coming to drugs. The name of the drugs in alkylating agents, you can remember as if was not present, take my cycle. So very good gesture. If was not present, take my cycle. So if stand for I phosphamycin. I phosphamide. Bus stand for bu-sulfan. Bu-sulfan. N stand for nitrosojurias. Nitrosojurias. Now nitrosojuria is name of the group. The drug in this group end with mustin. The drugs like carmustin, lomustin, c-mustin. These are nitrosojurias and sometimes the abbreviated forms are sometimes asked like 
बकनू ककनू मिथाइल ककनू सो डू नॉट गेट कन्फ्यूज इन दी एग्जाम इफ दे राइट दी एब्रीविएटेड फॉर्म लाइक बी सी एन यू इट इज द नेम ऑफ द ड्रग लाइक बिस नाइट्रोइथाइल साइक्लोमिथाइल नाइट्रोसो यूरिया सो इफ एनी ड्रग विच इज कमिंग इन दी एब्रीविएशन एंडिंग विद एन यू मीन्स दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट नाइट्रोसो यूरिया एन यू मीन्स नाइट्रोसो यूरिया नो नीड टू रिमेंबर द फुल नेम्स ओके सो कार्मस्टिन लोमस्टिन सी मस्टिन आर नाइट्रोसो यूरियाज देन पी स्टैंड फॉर प्रो कार्बस पी आर इज प्रो कार्बस टी इज टीमोजोलोमाइट टीमोजोलोमाइट एम इज मेल फैलान एंड अनदर ड्रग माइटोमाइसिन सी माइटोमाइसिन सी एंड साइकल मीन्स साइक्लोफॉसफामाइट सो दीज आर द इम्पॉर्टेंट ड्रग्स इन द एल्काइलेटिंग एजेंट कैटेगरी इफ बस नॉट प्रेजेंट टेक माई साइकिल नाउ वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड दीज हैव सिक्स साइड इफेक्ट फोर कॉमन टू एवरी ड्रग bone marrow suppression alopecia diarrhea hyperuricemia and two of this group secondary leukemia and infertility okay? now special point regarding the individual drugs if you want to discuss so first drug and the last drug that means i phosphamide and cyclophosphamide so cyclophosphamide and i phosphamide these are metabolized to produce two compounds one is 4 hydroxy cyclophosphamide or in case of aldophosphamide i phosphamide is aldophosphamide so these two compounds are produced 4 hydroxy cyclophosphamide or aldophosphamide and second compound is acrolein acrolein now what is important this is the active compound that means it has anti cancer properties so in case of cyclophosphamide it is 4 hydroxy cyclophosphamide and in case of i phosphamide it is aldophosphamide that is the anti cancer substance but acrolein acrolein is filtered by the kidney it through the kidney it come to the ureter then to the urinary bladder and in the urinary bladder it cause very severe inflammation and inflammation of urinary bladder is known as cystitis inflammation of urinary bladder is known as cystitis now sometime the inflammation is so severe that it leads to bleeding hematuria starts and that is known as hemorrhagic cystitis so that is the very important mcq asked which compound is responsible for hemorrhagic cystitis it is acrolein so remember 4 hydroxy cyclophosphamide is the active anti cancer substance whereas acrolein cause hemorrhagic cystitis now on hemorrhagic cystitis three important mcqs are asked first which anti cancer drugs cause hemorrhagic cystitis these are cyclophosphamide and i phosphamide but be very careful i phosphamide has higher risk of causing hemorrhagic cystitis as compared to cyclophosphamide so i phosphamide at any dose can cause hemorrhagic cystitis but cyclophosphamide cause hemorrhagic cystitis only at high doses okay then second important question asked is how to prevent this hemorrhagic cystitis how to prevent is by giving a compound known as mesna prevention is done by giving mesna mesna is mercaptoethene sulfonic acid mercaptoethene sulfonic acid is mesna that is used to prevent hemorrhagic cystitis third important thing how to treat hemorrhagic cystitis these are two different things to prevent we have to give mesna along with these drugs or before these drugs but to treat after it has happened and it has happened it is inflammation so we need to give anti inflammatory drugs like steroids steroids are used to treat hemorrhagic cystitis now what is important is mesna it can be given oral or it can also be given iv but mesna should be given with every dose of i phosphamide 
एंड विद हाई डोज ऑफ साइक्लोफास्फामाइड हाई डोज ऑफ साइक्लोफास्फामाइड रिक्वायर मैसना लो डोज डू नॉट रिक्वायर वेर एज आई फास्फामाइड वी शुड ऑलवेज गिव विद मैसना टू प्रिवेंट हेमरेजिक सिस्टाइटिस वेर एज फॉर ट्रीटमेंट इट इज स्टेरॉइड सो इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग हेमरेजिक सिस्टाइटिस विच एंटी कैंसर ड्रग्स कॉज आई फॉस्फामाइड फॉलोड बाई साइक्लोफॉस्फामाइड देन विच कंपाउंड कॉजेज एक्रोलिन and what is the treatment it is steroid and how to prevent give mesna okay so that is important about cyclophosphamide and iphosphamide second important thing apart from this side effect cyclophosphamide it can also cause pulmonary fibrosis okay so you need to remember which drugs cause pulmonary fibrosis which drugs are responsible for pulmonary fibrosis the important drugs are carmestin cyclophosphamide busulfan busulfan methotrexate methotrexate amiodarone and bleomycin you you can see that apart from amiodarone which is an antiarrhythmic drug all other are anti cancer drugs so how to remember very easy you can see that in the name of these all of these there is some vehicle some mode of transport like you can see here is car here is cycle here is bus and mytho truck set so here it is truck this is drone so all are mode of transport and all of them will blow the horn so blow the horn means blow my say blow the horn okay so you can easily remember the drugs causing pulmonary fibrosis with the name of vehicles we have cycle bus truck car and drone and they will blow the horn means blow my say Okay, so that is important about the first group of drugs, iphosphamide and cyclophosphamide. Okay, then moving to second drug, busulfan. Busulfan, as we already discussed, the important thing. Busulfan, the name contain bus. It can cause pulmonary fibrosis, and you can remember from the name also. The name says it contain LF means it cause lung fibrosis. Lung fibrosis, pulmonary fibrosis is the side effect of busulfan. Okay. then coming to nitrosoureas what are the special point about nitrosoureas nitrosoureas are the drugs which are usually used for brain tumors brain tumors but the special point to remember they cause delayed bone marrow suppression delayed bone marrow suppression normally when we start anti cancer drugs and after few days we check the blood counts if bone marrow suppression has to occur the blood count become low so there is less rbc or less wbcs but nitrosoureas do not cause immediate decrease in blood counts it takes longer time so it causes delayed bone marrow suppression delayed bone marrow suppression is caused by nitrosoureas sometimes question is asked which of the following anti cancer drug cause delayed neutropenia so it is nitrosoureas delayed bone marrow suppression so that is important about nitrosoureas now moving to next important drug which is procarbazin procarbazin can cause disulfiram like reaction so special important side effect it cause disulfiram like reaction that means intolerance to alcohol so procarbazin should be avoided in alcoholic patients timozolomide is a drug of choice for brain tumors called gliomas for gliomas the drug of choice is timozolomide melphalan is used in multiple myeloma melphalan is used in multiple myeloma whereas mitomycin c this is a special drug mitomycin c it has two special uses one it is used in superficial bladder cancer superficial bladder cancer 
So that is not important. But what is important is by which route you will give mitomycin C for superficial bladder cancer. What is the route of administration? Yes, what is this special thing? It is given inside the urinary bladder, directly injected inside the urinary bladder. So route of injection is intravesical. So it is given as intravesical injection for superficial bladder cancers. Which other drug is used for superficial bladder cancer by same route that means intravesical? Yes, the other drug is BCG. So BCG can also be used for superficial bladder cancer. So two important drugs used for superficial bladder cancer, mitomycin C and BCG. Now, second important use of mitomycin C, it is used for subglottic stenosis. Subglottic stenosis. So basically due to cancer, if there is stenosis in the glottis, below the glottis, so usually that stenosis is dilated first. With the help of probes, that stenosis is dilated. But many times re-stenosis occurs. So to prevent the re-stenosis after dilatation, topically we instill mitomycin C so that re-stenosis do not occur. Okay. So that is the important points regarding the alkylating agents. Okay.